I've got another DIY LED strip lighting project on the go. I've experimented with these LED strip lights before. I mean, the first time I was just curious as to whether they were even bright enough to use as, you know, regular room lighting, and they are. And then the next time I got the idea to use a, a steel stud for mounting them, that helps dissipate the heat and just gives a nice cheap mounting bracket and that worked well and I also used a PC power supply to provide the voltage that I needed and you know that was free because it's a surplus power supply and then a few months ago over on his I build it channel John Heiss took that stud idea and turned it upside down and he mounted his LED lights inside the stud channel and he also fitted in a diffuser which you know takes care of all those hot spots and I thought that was a brilliant idea and I'm totally stealing it. This is a full-on DIY build. The parts are all either sourced from overseas or from local stores, and everything that's got an online link, the links are down below, so you can find it if you need to. Of course, I'm using these LED strip lights again. These are five meter, 50-50 SMD LEDs in white color. There's 300 LEDs on a strip, and they're about 650 Canadian each, you know, coming, coming from overseas. The PC power supply from my last video still works great, but I thought I'd try these sealed AC adapters this time. They're 60 watt units, they're only about $15 Canadian, and they should be able to power two sets of LED strip lights. And of course, they're dead silent. I also picked up a bunch of connectors. They're only like a, a buck twenty each, and this will allow me to make things quick connect so that I can connect and disconnect pieces. And also these splitters will mean that I can easily have two LED strips going to the one power supply. But really I could have skipped all of this, you know, and, and you know, just wired everything directly. And as I mentioned before, I'm using these steel studs again for mounting the lights. These are going to be the fixtures, if you will. Okay, stop for a minute. This is future art here. I'm working on editing some of the video and I realized that I'm just about to get into the nitty gritty of what I'm building and I realized I haven't really given an overview of just what is this all about. So here's the idea is you've got this section of stud and in the stud I will have all these LED strips attached and they'll be wired together. There'll be the connector at the end. I've got it mounted on a board to stiffen it up. Then that diffuser goes over the whole thing and then it can mount to the ceiling just like a regular light and it's all going to be powered by this AC adapter. Okay, back to the nitty gritty. These are three and a half inches wide. They're eight feet long and I cut them in half to make four foot fixtures. For the diffuser, I picked up a two by four sheet of this stuff from the home center. You can find it in the aisle with all the drop ceiling supplies. This was the most expensive part of this bill as it was $26. However, on the plus side, I could cut it up into six pieces, so I'll, you know, which works out to like, you know, four and a half dollars per light. Now the studs come with this oily film on it, so I took them out to the garage and I wiped it down with mineral spirits because, you know, the LED strips have this self-adhesive back that I want to make sure makes a good connection on the studs. Now these are, these are studs, they're not meant to be light fixtures, so they have them, these holes in them for stud things, but I don't want those holes because I'm going to be mounting strips there and I need something to stick through so stick to. So I got another piece of studding which I cut into a small piece and I pounded it flat and if I had a riveting gun that would be a, a great place to use a riveting gun but I, I used to have one and I can't find it so instead I'm just working with what I've got and I cut up these strips strips of wafer board and I'm going to use this as a backer behind the light and that gives me a way to fasten in that piece of metal and I can just screw things down and pinch it and that way it'll be metal all the way along for when you glue it and then this gives me kind of a nice it stiffens up the light and uh, these are I made them all so they were just an inch longer than the stud pieces so I can you know I have mounting holes there in hindsight I probably should have made them a bit wider because that way then you know you could have like a flange along the edge for screwing things in but I didn't and you know it'll be fine So if you ever do anything like this, you want to make sure that you line these strips up because you're going to need to connect these little copper pads together when you jumper between the, uh, the strips. I wanted these jacks to be on the end of the light, like this. And these jacks are kind of wider here and skinnier here. So I took this to the drill press and I drilled a half inch hole on one side and a skinnier hole on the other. So these will now fit in nicely and I'm just going to lock it in place by putting a little bit of epoxy around it 
And then we will have something like this that we can now screw into the end of our fixture. So there's a lot of finicky soldering that has to happen to connect these strips together. I have a lot of respect for you people who do finicky soldering. So at this end I got the power coming in and I'm using the wires at two ends of the strips and I can connect that in but then I need to jump it to the other strips so they also get power. And these are tiny little dots where you got to solder it and you want to make sure you don't get any solder from the negative to the positive and so on. And notice something missing here. I ordered a set of about six LED strips and two-thirds of them had no positive negative markings. So the first time I laid one out of course it, it was a mess because I had to test everything so I, I was careful with the next one that I laid out I went through and I made sure I made marks every time I cut it so that I would know which side is the positive and negative. So this is one of the other strips that does have all the markings. At all the copper pads, you can see the little scissor symbol that indicates this is where you can cut it. And it also has the little negative and positive and negative and positive on every, every little spot. So there's no chance of getting confusion. So in an effort to get away from some of that finicky soldering, I thought, why don't I make one eight foot long fixture? Because these spools are just about, uh, if you cut them in half, they're just a little bit more than eight feet. So I could cut this in half and then I have wires at both ends. And so I'll run two sets of strips down here. So it'll be the equivalent of one four foot. So there's pros and cons of making an eight foot fixture. The positive is that you don't need to do all these little jumpers for connecting the strips together, which is fiddly and error prone. I had a lot of headaches. All you have to do with this one is you have to do a little bit of soldering here as you put together the wires at the end of the strips. The negative is that it's eight feet long and that can be awkward. I only have an 11 foot wide shop so an eight foot is kind of awkward in here to work with. This one has got two strips in it. The, the power supply can handle two strips so that's fine whereas the short one is just one strip that's cut up into you know four pieces with a little bit of extra left over at the end. Way back in the 70s when I was taking shop class we had this I think he was an old Mennonite gentleman as our shop teacher and every time we would build a lamp and somebody would test it for the first time he would always say let there be light when the light turned on successfully with the light bulb and all that yes and it was very good Yeah, so here I am pointing cameras at lights again, and uh, it's not easy. So, again, I don't have a lux meter, and I'm really not interested in going through huge amounts of numbers and details. I can tell you the new one with the uh, diffuser appears dimmer to my eyes. Camera makes them look pretty much the same, but this does also spread it out more, and it's softer. So, let's... Here, I've unplugged the old one, and it seems to produce enough light. A little bit less, but I'm also still going to be adding more of these fixtures up there. So, mixed results, generally positive. I like the looks of it. Fun project. Here's something I noticed. Let me turn the lights off, or turn the LED lights off and back on, and boom. So. The old computer power supply, so this is the old salvage power supply from a computer. It's noisy a little bit because it's got that fan hum, but it also seems to be quicker. This solid state one, there's just a little pause before the light turns on. Uh, I'm guessing it's these things fault because I've seen other people where the LEDs are instant on. In fact, most LEDs I've seen are instant on, but these are not instant on. It's not a huge deal, but... After all, fluorescent lights are not instant on either. Okay, I think this is my stopping point for now. I've made six, or rather five lights. I've got two up here, one which is the double long eight footer. I've got two more that I haven't mounted yet. And they look good. I like the soft light. However,
they're frankly not enough light. Now the camera of course does its auto adjusting magic so I'm not even sure how much you can really tell but um, I either need a lot more LED lights or I'm still going to need these uh, fluorescents for a little bit or I would need much brighter LEDs than what I've got. There are brighter ones out there. Um, remember these were about six or seven dollars uh, shipped from China. Um, I, I've bought more expensive ones. I bought some that were over double the cost off of Amazon. Uh, they weren't double the brightness, you know. The, uh, they were maybe 10-20% brighter, maybe. Um, you know, that's my highly scientific eyeballs telling you that. So to sum up, I had some fun playing with LED lights again, but I still have some fluorescence in the shop. Maybe next time I'll finally get rid of them.